Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Notrel Engineering. In this video, we are going to solve axis symmetric problem using ANSYS Workbench. In order to be good CAE engineer, you should always exploit the advantages of any kind of symmetry. That makes our job much efficient. First, it is very important to understand what is axis symmetric problem. Let's take an example. This is a cylindrical body. And for cylindrical body, we can use cylindrical coordinate system as well instead of Cartesian coordinate system. Cylindrical coordinate system is shown over here. In cylindrical coordinate system, any point can be defined by using r, theta and z. Now imagine a problem like this problem where the solution of problem will be independent of this theta. It will depend only on r and z. Then you can use axisymmetric elements. It is similar to how in 3D case, if our solution is independent of any particular direction, we convert that 3D problem into 2D problem by assuming plane stress or plane strain. Similarly, in this case, because our solution is independent of angle theta, we converted this 3D problem into 2D problem. Just make sure that your solution is independent of angle theta. For that, geometry or any boundary conditions or loads, everything should be independent of angle theta. If you have a load only on one side, let's say there is a load over here, but there is no load over here, then you can't use axisymmetry in this case. This load also should be everywhere. Okay, now let's come back to our problem. This is the geometry shown over here. All the dimensions are given and all the dimensions are in meters. And we are going to assume there is a uniform load on this top surface. For our case, we can choose this center axis as our Z axis. Hence, our solution will be independent of angle theta across this Z axis. And using that symmetry, we will convert this 3D problem into this 2D problem. In this case, this is our axis of symmetry. And if we revolve this shape around this axis of symmetry by 360 degrees, we will get our original shape. There is a uniform pressure of 100 megapascal on the top and the bottom edge has a roller support. Here, when you apply roller support on bottom, this point will always have a fixed support as well. So this point can't move in this X direction as well. So when you apply roller support, one point is always fixed, which avoids the rigid body motion. I'm going to assume material as aluminum with Young's modulus of 70 gigapascal and Poisson's ratio of 0.33. And these are the basic axisymmetric elements in ANSYS. Now let's start with ANSYS workbench. Now when you open ANSYS workbench, first thing you have to do is drag this static structural analysis type over here because we are interested in static response. You can rename this project. I'm going to rename it as axisymmetry. Now we will go from point 1 to point 7 sequentially. So first point is done, which is choosing the analysis type. Then go to second point. Just double click on this. Here we will create material aluminium. You can see by default ANSYS will have material structural steel, but we will click here to add a new material, which is aluminium. And then you have to drag isotropic elasticity from here to in this property. You can define Young's modulus over here, which is 70 gigapascal you can change this unit to megapascal and then change this to and poison's ratio is 0.33 so young's modulus is 70 gigapascal your unit is megapascal and i'm putting 70000 and poison's ratio 0.33 now close this tab now before we go into geometry just right click on this geometry and select properties then one window will pop up over here and in this property, change this analysis type from 3D to 2D. This is very important. It is very difficult to change this later. So just make sure you change it to 2D and then close this. Now right click on this geometry and you have two ways to define a geometry. One is space claim and another is design modeler. Space claim has many, many options and it is mostly used for kind of complex geometries. And design modeler is much simple than that. So we are going to go ahead with design modeler because our geometry is very simple. So click on this design modeler and a new window will pop up. Check if units are in meters, they are. Now select XY plane and click this look at face button. Now we have to draw our shape in this first quadrant of XY plane and the axis of symmetry will be always Y axis. So this geometry we will draw in the first quadrant. For that, go into sketching and in draw, you can select 
line segment. First, I will draw the horizontal line and you can adjust the dimensions using this dimension button, general dimension. And you can see dimension is over here. Now it is 5.9 meters, but we want it as half of 0 0.3. So 0 0.15 meters. So you can change this 0 0.15 and then zoom in. Okay. So this first segment is done. Now again, go into draw, choose line segment and a vertical line from here. Dimension of this vertical line is 0 0.5 meters. So again, I will change dimension immediately. It's better if you keep on changing dimension after every line segment. 0 0.5. Now next horizontal line again. And dimension of this is 0 0.3 minus 0.15 divided by 2. So 0 0.75. Am I right? So this one should be 0 0.075. And now let's just finish the top part. From here, one vertical line. up to the y axis and back. And this one is 0 0.2. Now you can see all sketches in blue, which means it is already fully constrained. If you try to give additional dimension, ANSYS will give you warning that model is over constrained. We don't need this. So just delete this one. Now our sketch is done. Next step is to create a surface from this sketch. For that, go back to modeling. You can see the sketch over here and then go in concept, select surfaces from sketches and select this sketch. When you select the sketch, it will turn yellow and then say apply and then generate. And you can see the surface is created and you will see over here one body is also created, which is a surface body. Now that's set in design modeler. So just minimize the design modeler and go back to your project type. You can see geometry also adds tick mark over here. So now next step four, five, six and seven, everything we will do in modeler. So just double click on this and another window will pop up. Now in the modeler, our body is already there. We will just go through all the steps from top to bottom. Now first is geometry. You can see the body is already there. The next is material in this both materials are there. One is structural steel, which was given by ANSYS as a default. And the another one is aluminum, which we created. Now click on this surface body, go down over here. Here you can see material assignment by default. It will be structural steel. So change it to aluminum and then click on this geometry. And in this geometry, you can see 2D behavior is defined as plane stress, but we want axisymmetry. So just change this to axis symmetric and now ANSYS will use axis symmetric elements. Okay. So once that is done, go to mesh. Now first let's check what mesh ANSYS generates by default. So just click on this generate and this is the mesh created by ANSYS, which you can see is not that good. It is a very coarse mesh. So maybe let's just refine it a little bit for that. Go to this sizing here, select the geometry, which is this geometry, say apply. And now reduce this element size. So by default, it is 3.75 into 10 raised to minus two. So maybe we can make this 10 raised to minus two and again hit generate. And you can see this is much finer mesh. Maybe we should go in between. So I will change it to 0 0.02. Yeah, this is better. Let's go ahead to the static structural. Here we have to apply boundary conditions and loads. For boundary condition, I'm going to apply a roller support at bottom edge. To do that, you have to select frictionless support. Just select this frictionless, select the bottom edge, see apply and that's it done. Then to apply load, I'm going to use pressure. Select the top surface, see apply and pressure is 100 megapascal. Your unit is Pascal. So make sure you're applying correctly. So it should be hundred six zeros. So one into 10 raised to eight Pascal is hundred megapascal. And you can see by default, it says ramped 
and you can see graph also over here this means that pressure will slowly increase from zero to whatever value you provided now go into this solution tab do a right click on it and insert the output quantities you are interested in for example total deformation again let's say stress one mic stress what else can we insert maybe strain equivalent one mic strain and so on there are many options to select over here you can insert whatever things you want and then hit solve it's ready so now if you just click on total deformation you can see the deformation over here this is the legend these are the values and unit is in meters now simultaneously if you want to see undeformed shape as well you can go in this edges and click on show undeformed wire frame so here you can see how the undeformed shape was and now how the deformed shape is so because of pressure on the top it is getting compressed and because of poisson's ratio there is some expansion as well so you can see the width over here is increased now as our analysis was axis symmetric our original shape was 3d cylindrical shape it would be great if we can visualize this result in that 3d shape means we have to revolve this result around y axis by 360 degrees to visualize that what you have to do is click on this model and add a symmetry so click on this symmetry now when you are on this symmetry sometimes it will be blank there is nothing over here in this case you have to turn on the beta options what i mean by that is go back to your project tab here go in tools go in options select appearance scroll down over here and tick mark this beta options say okay and now if you go back to modeler you will see this is not blank anymore it has many options and here we have to change this to 2d axis symmetric here the theta value is 10 that means ansys will revolve this in the increment of 10 degrees around the y axis so in total it will repeat it for 37 times you can change this value to make it even finer you can change it to 5 or you can even increase to 20 and now whenever you click on this results let's say total deformation you will see it is revolving around the y axis let's check stress you can see some stress concentration over here if you want to animate these results just hit this play button and you can see the animation anyway that's it for this video if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to show your support and you can also find many similar videos which you might be interested in you can go to channels playlist tab and here you can find different playlist where all similar videos are combined together and as always thank you for watching